Didn't you see that cool thing that I did in Minecraft? Well, how about let's replay that moment with the replay mod? Hello everybody and welcome to OMG Craft. I'm your host, OMG Chad. We're showing off a really, really powerful mod that will allow you to show off your gameplay from a unique perspective, not just from the point of view of the character. On top of that, you can pull off amazing time lapses and with moving cameras and all sorts of stuff without needing to have a second Minecraft account or needing to have op on a server. This is all done through a mod and it's recently been updated for 1.11, so it should work with most vanilla servers right now. So let's jump in. So here we are inside of modded Minecraft. You can see that uh, it's powered by Forge. We got some mods and we have a replay viewer. Now I've already recorded one replay, but I'm gonna show you that we're gonna make one completely from scratch here. So with the replay mod installed, you're just going to start a single player or a multiplayer world. And you can see up in the corner, it says that it is recording. And as we move around, everything that we do is captured in game. Now this is not like a normal let's play recording or the recording that you're watching right now where it is static and it is only what the vi view of the player uh, that you're seeing right now is forever. So I'm gonna record a little bit of time just so that we have some stuff to play with when we get to the next part. Okay, once you're happy with what you have recorded, you can go ahead and disconnect and the quote recording will be stopped. You can go back to your replay viewer and you'll see a timestamp of when or, and what you recorded. Uh, you can see that uh, this one was the one before, so this is the one that I want. Go ahead and click load, and you'll be brought into the world that your character was in, but now you are a separate view of what is going on. Let me explain a few of the tools and a few of the things that you can change. First, if you want to have a mouse to change any of the options that you can kind of see above me, all you have to do is hit T and that mouse becomes available. Now I could pause what we are watching. Of course, we have a timeline. This timeline will be whatever the length of, so if I did like 20 minutes, uh, this would just also be a 20 minute timeline. Looks like I only did about a minute and 35. So it's about a minute and 35. There's no specific time with this timeline. So uh, you can jump ahead. So let me jump ahead. And here we are. You can even jump backwards if uh, we wanted to. That does take a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and click play. And you can see me trying to shoot some stuff up into the air. Oh, and an uh, arrow coming down. And we can even go back in time. And there I am over there. Also, you can speed up time. So here I am jumping all around. Or you can slow down time. So everything moves in slow motion. And this is a good way to get a, a good sense of exactly where you want to be. Uh, you may not use this much in your keyframing, which we're going to get to in a second. But it would be nice if you really want to get that perfect moment, you can pause and make sure that your keyframes are just exact. So what am I talking about keyframes? Well, this uses keyframes and keyframes are basically like anchors to do your recording, your movements and your time. So let's first talk about position keyframes while we're just paused here. The speed, even though it's low, is actually uh, normal. So right now we are paused in time and we are going to create a camera path. So first we go in and we place our camera where we want it to go. Let's get a, a nice big close up of my face here. How about that? Put a keyframe down. Now on this timeline down here, you can see that keyframe and I can even drag it around. It's placed on the timeline. This timeline has numbers and so you can tell that this is five seconds further on in time. Uh, and so let's just do a big uh, scoot back here. So we'll just completely pan back and get a view of myself through the trees here and then place down another position keyframe. So that means that it's going to take us five seconds to get that from that first position, which you can see right there, to where we are now. 
And if we drag the playhead back and click play, you can see that it takes us about five seconds to do just that movement. Now that's a position keyframe and you can do everything you want. You could zoom all around. I could now zoom over to the horse. If I only move the timeline uh, ahead, maybe a second then, and then place a keyframe like, uh, you know, that was a really big move. Let's only move it to, to one second, put down another keyframe. When I go all the way back and play it, that's going to be a very fast move. Whoa. Uh, that is because of that fast move was so fast that it is interpolating uh, that movement. As you can see, the uh, red line here goes down through the ground because this movement is so quickly after here, it's kind of interpolating them all together. So if I was to grab that and scoot it back, you can see that the uh, the line here is quite a bit different. So if we were to scoot back and hit play, it's quite a different situation than it was before. So now let's talk about time keyframes. And time keyframes may be a little confusing because you are keyframing time and sometimes it will not be in real time. So right now on the playhead, we are at 32 seconds. So if I bring this back all the way back and I add a time keyframe just to anchor ourselves where we are now. Now I could move forward five seconds, but I would also have to move this playhead forward exactly five seconds in order for it to play in real time. Let's go ahead and do that. So if we bring this back, that kind of makes sense, right? Before it was stopped and now this is playing in real time, that five second loop. Now, I, the keyframe stopped back here at that second position and time has stopped again. So if we want to, uh, first off, that was uh, in real time and we have to use our brain to add the time and know where our keyframes are. So that can be a little confusing because uh, you could do something like this. So that was our first keyframe and uh, we are going to now continue this motion of the camera path over to the second keyframe. And what I'm going to do is speed up time a lot, basically all the way to the end of the timeline. So before we were at 30, I believe it was 37 seconds. Now we've moved ahead almost a minute here. Oh no, we can't go all the way a minute, almost a full 60 seconds. But on our timeline, on our keyframe timeline, we've only moved ahead about 10 seconds. So we're gonna to get to see a minute's worth of activity in only 10 seconds once I add this uh, time keyframe. So let's go back and watch what that looks like. So we get this, which is about in real time. Then we hit this keyframe now. Time is going to speed up. You can see that it's speeding up. And I'm shooting stuff up into the air, trying to get hit by an arrow. And I run off in my horse on my trusty steed. So that is why that can be a little bit confusing, but at the same time, it can be incredibly powerful. Because imagine an epic battle where you're getting uh, a whole bunch of different shots. Well, you could slow down time to zoom in on a certain player doing a really amazing clutch move. And uh, because time isn't just what it was in real time, uh, you can do a lot of really, really neat things. Or even time lapses, kind of like what we did before. So if I hit T and we could, I think we can delete those, yeah, by just hitting uh, delete. And we could grab this and move it over here and move it over here and do whatever we want with the timeline. Once you're happy with what you have and what the end result looks like, then you can save your uh, path as a movie. And uh, this is what it looks like. You have your default rendering options. The developer has that basically you keep this all the same in P4. You can change the resolution and the frame rate pretty easily. Uh, you also have some uh, advanced settings down here. And in order to get this to work, I needed to add the path of FFmpeg, which it's using to encode this in this little area, which you get to uh, not all uh, that. Uh, you have to double click that advanced settings in order to get it. So that can be a little confusing. You can also save, decide where this gets saved to. So let's just do replay right there. Let's go ahead and hit save and let's render it. And that takes you to this screen. And you can see a preview of what you've done. If you click this show preview 
button. Or you can make it go a little bit faster, which you can see the render time uh, goes a little bit faster without seeing the preview of what you've done. Once it is finished, then you can open the video folder or upload to YouTube. Let's go ahead and upload, uh, click the video folder so you know exactly where it opened. And sure enough, here it is. If uh, we double click it, it, uh, it plays just fine. I uh, moved around some time, uh, time frames so that it looks like everything is in uh, super fast speed until we get there. But uh, there we are, a rendered movie that you can uh, play with as you want. One final thing that I want to mention is uh, on, if I go ahead and exit one, uh, I haven't found a way to actually save this keyframe uh, data so that when I exit this area, then it comes back after I exit this replay. So what I mean by that is, uh, as you can see, if I hit exit replay, and then go back into the replay viewer and click back in. None of my keyframes are here. So uh, make sure that you do everything you want to do all in one go. And finally, you may have noticed in the replay viewer that some of my recordings have thumbnails and some don't. In order to choose a thumbnail for your replay, just go ahead and hit in at any time and it will set that as a thumbnail. So we could go get uh, maybe a derpy shot of a sheep in here. Let's uh, let's get a sheep. There we go. Bat. Oh, he looked away. Gosh darn it. There we go. You. Hey, look at me. Whatever. Just a sheep. Uh, just like that. And as we exit this replay, then you can see the sheep that I took a photo of is the thumbnail. Also, there is a big community online for this. So you can upload uh, these creations to the community as well. So there you have it, a simple tutorial on how to use the replay mod. This is made by Crushed Pixel and Johnny0702. Big congratulations to you guys for making an absolutely exceptional mod. Of course, you can check out the description for more information about this mod. Thanks so much for watching this episode of OMG Craft. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give this video a big old like. Make sure you subscribe for future videos and I'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.